CD. Uh -huh. I thought that was hilarious. All right, let me figure out what our script's going to be real quick, and then I will, uh, yes, father of Phil Rivers. <laughs> uh. Welcome back to Prep Rally. This is the week four edition, but you know what week this four. is? Week four. Week four. This Seems is the like week been like a month or something already. Well, I think a month is four weeks, the uh, so last time I oh, checked. Okay, all yeah. right, I got so it. So this right. is the week four edition. You know what, Rick? The non-conference part of the oh, season is over with. We're going to throw away all those records yep. because now everybody is zero and zero. Not, not. Not and not equals not. Is that what the not. coach is called, the second season? Not plus not equals it, it, not. Not, yeah. I, I got that one down. I don't have to be a double not spy to know not plus I not equals not. Jethro Bodine School of Mathematics. Absolutely. But before we get into the conference openers, which will be this week, we're going to talk about, we're going to wrap up week three Why? from last week. Well, oh, we're yeah, gonna, okay, yeah. We've got time, we got to fill, so yeah. we're going to fill right, time. Yeah. So, right. Rick, you and yeah. I last week were over yes. at Fayetteville. Number one Bryant, defending state champion, came into Fayetteville. You know what happened to Fayetteville, Rick? That's what happened to him. Hey, Bryant right. took them to the woodshed. Perfect headline. Bryant bullies Fayetteville. Sorry, Fayetteville. They absolutely did. Uh, man, they are a fantastic they team. Are. They got everything. Um, that big, uh, hey, Razorback fans, I know you're down a little bit. The best player on that field that night was Ahmad Adams no who going to Arkansas State. No doubt. And, you know, I, I got a different perspective. I get to, I got advantage. You're up there in the press. You got to keep her. I walk in the sideline looking for things. I remember one play. The center pull everybody else uh, pushes down, and the center comes out and blocks, wipes out the linebacker. And he pulled. Two. Yes, the center pulled. What? Yeah, and way out there on the corner, and uh, Ahmad goes about 50 yards. So man, they're supre supremely well coached. They got a great heady quarterback. They got receiver, defensive back, as they we do. saw on the interception. But man, Ahmad, hit number 35, he is an absolute beast. He's totally played linebacker for the Red Wolves. Total different level. Yeah, uh, Bryant. Then I think. From what we've seen There's so big far, gap. big gap between them. You're right. So when I talked to Buck James after the game, it's funny how uh, Adams his weight. When I when I asked Buck the first question, I was, you know, about his running back, he said, "Well, he's six two, two hundred, two hundred twenty pounds, and he runs so and so." And then in the same quote, he said, "You know, he weighs two hundred thirty five pounds." So what is it, Coach? Is it two twenty? Is it two thirty five? I don't know how much he weighs, but I know whatever it is, he is a big dude. And not only is he a big dude, he is a fast dude. Man, he's a physical specialist. And I know Red Wolf fans are going to be excited to see him over there. I'm sure some other the big time schools are going to come after him late, but he told me he's looking forward to uh, going up there. And, you know, they had Arkansas baseball signee and I think an Arkansas commit, but man, Adams was the, was the difference. They're just a fantastic team. Everybody else is kind of hovering like right here. Yeah. Phew, Brian are right there. But, you know, weirder things have happened. You That's got to right. play out the That's whole right. year. And North Little Rock, we've talked about this. You know, they're in the same conference. North Little Rock has been missing one of its best players, uh, Brandon Thomas. He was a running back who got yeah. hurt got hurt in a fireworks fireworks thing around July 4th, hand injury. And, uh, you know, kids are kids. Yeah. And, uh, but when he comes back, North Little Rock will be a different team. So, yeah. well, when they and Bryant go together, that's going to be a great game. Yeah. So, 42-13, Bryant over Fayetteville. So, Bryant slapped two 7A West back games. Back to back. Yep, yep. yep. So, so uh, yeah. The strength is down wow. there in Central Arkansas wow. right now. I love the 7A West, but, man, them kids down there got it going right now. Now we're going to go to Rebound Road, Rick, where Springdale Harbor hosted Pine Bluff last week. Now, you know in the opener, Harbor went down to Pulaski Academy. This happens. Things snowballed. 84-68 final in that game. And you're sitting over there going, man, does Harbor play any defense at all? Yep. Well, I think I'm they've thinking. answered that yep. question the last two weeks. Back-to-back -back shutouts. Had a shutout over over Russellville, a shutout over Pine Bluff in their in the uh, in their last non-conference game. So, yes, they do play defense. Whatever happened down at Pulaski Academy, they got it straightened out over at Harbor. You know, you can do anything with numbers to prove a point. So, I just ciphered up that Harbor's given up about 22 points a game, but. 
that it was something like that. I'm I got, close. I got I'm close. It was 84, then not, not. Harbor has had back-to-back -back shutouts, and Coach Moreland, old defense coordinator, he said that first game he put too many guys on the island, uh, complicated too much. He said, we're going to go back and play basic football, and that's what they did. So, man, congratulations to Harbor. Simple is better. Yeah, they were back on track. They were back on track. So we had that one going on, and then we're going to talk a little bit about Farmington. Rick, Farmington, did yeah. you see coming in? Farmington off to a 3-0 and start after they beat P. Ridge, but Rick, they didn't just beat them. They dominated people. They, they absolutely died. T talked to Coach Adams. The uh, offense got off to a little um, slow start, but the defense really rose to the occasion for uh, Farmington. They had like two or three interceptions. Uh, they had some stops, and P. Ridge, um, what did they give up? One touchdown, and then gradually, I think just before the half, that uh, that uh, Farmington uh, got it rolling with um, uh, Watson, Q. Watson, McQuavion. McQuavion, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, I don't, I don't have that he had, down there. Two touchdown passes. Passes, boom, boom. Yeah. Then he kind of put the icing on the cake to a big night for him. 87-yard touchdown run for him at the end of the game. And, of course, uh, Drew Sturgeon, um, I think he intercepted one to pass it on defense. The kid does Would everything for them. And a game you didn't think was going to mean that much. All of a sudden, that's a big game at Farmington. Homecoming at Farmington. Homecoming. Who are they playing? Uh, I believe it's Clarksville yep. coming in. And uh, last three time I checked, 3-0 and against 3-0. and So, yep. there we go. That conference, right probably West bat. Conference Boom. Openers. That'll be a good one there. Yep. So, according to our records and Leland Barclay, who we go to for our records, he is our guy, that is Mike Adams' 200th win at Farmington. Now, there might be some discrepancies, I think, somewhere. But according to our records, that was his 200th win. So, congratulations to Coach Adams over at Farmington for that big win. Salute. Absolutely. Great job. 200 wins is... That is a huge milestone. So, again, congratulations to Coach Mike Adams on that. So we're going to take a break right here. We're going to check out some of the really good, great, awesome photos that our photo staff yep. got over the week from football and volleyball and things like that. When we come back, we're going to have Paul Boyd's – Paul Boyd's? Paul Boyd? Yeah, Paul, Paul Boyd. Boyd. Yeah, yeah, we works yeah, either way. As long as he's right on his check, that's all he cares that's about. That's it. Paul Boyd's weekly volleyball report. We'll be right back. Arkansas Democrat Gazette in this week's Volleyball Report. I spent a little time with the Springdale Harbor Lady Wildcats last night. They had a big win over Rogers. Uh, Harbor still leading the 6A West Conference there with a 6-0 mark as we head into almost to the midpoint of the conference play. Uh, big night for Kaylin Coon, sophomore. She had a, a nearly a triple-double in a, in a three-set match, which is really, really something. Uh, eight kills, 10 big service aces in 21 assists. She does a lot of things for the Lady Wildcats. 
Uh, they didn't show any ill effects. They had a long weekend, uh, played in Jinx, Oklahoma, uh, performed well in a tournament there, but uh, 22 sets in two days, that's the equivalent of four plus five set matches in two days. So they uh, went three and one over there against some really, really good competition, but uh, didn't, didn't really show any ill effects on Tuesday, took care of business, and uh, they're headed into a big showdown on Thursday with Fayetteville. They go to Fayetteville. Fayetteville uh, has one loss, so they're going to end uh, the first round of conference play with a big, big matchup on Thursday in Fayetteville. So if uh, Harbor can get that one, they'll be all alone atop the uh, 6A West as we end the first half of conference play. If not, if Fayetteville can get them, that would, be, that would leave a three-way tie likely atop with Bentonville, Fayetteville, and Harbor. So we got a really good, really good battle going on up at the top in the 6A West. Uh, in addition to Harbor uh, going over to Oklahoma and having a nice weekend, Fayetteville also uh, played in Springfield on Saturday and uh, ended up tied for third, lost in the semifinals against a good, good Nixa, Missouri team, which has also had some success against some of the better teams in Arkansas. Um, Fayetteville, again, getting ready for a big matchup on Thursday. Uh, they will uh, they'll host Harbor, uh, looking for the uh, see who will be at the uh, the top of the 6A West as we get to the midpoint there of conference play. Uh, Fort Smith Southside uh, wins again on Tuesday and they're now tied atop the 6A Central. They're they're in a three-way tie with Conway and Fort Smith Northside. But uh, again, coming up Thursday, another big one. Uh, they call it the Battle of Rogers Avenue, Fort Smith Northside versus Southside, with uh, the winner will have a, a, so a possession of the lead in the 6A Central with defending state champion Conway. Getting on, going on to some other, other classifications, Class 3A, the Paris Lady Eagles, still undefeated, 15-0. Uh, the defending state champions, they collect state titles, kind of like trading cards there at Paris. Uh, they look like they're on their way to another, another great season. Not only have they not lost a, a match, they haven't lost a set yet this season. So uh, they're really going well, and it uh, looks like they're headed to some good things. Uh, that'll wrap up our volleyball report for this week. I'm Paul Boyd, Northwest Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I'll see you at a gym near you. So great photos there, Rick. And of mm -hmm. course, volleyball is heating up. We're now getting into the 1st of October, so we're going to have the state volleyball tournament coming up. So man, just, you know, great, great volleyball action going on in the area. Thank you, Paul, for bringing that to us. So Rick, it's conference time. Yes. yes. All the records are out the yep. window. Every team is and zero, zero. And that, wasn't there the, like, uh, was it, uh, who was it last year that lost their first four games? Arkadelphia, and then come back won the state championship. They lost their first five games. Five games. So, you know, some of you teams out there struggling a little bit, hey, this is a whole new chapter. It's a second chance. So uh, forget about the non-conference stuff and get ready to roll. Well, that's a great segue, Rick, because Bentonville, the team that we're going to be at the game of the week this week, the yes. Apex Network Physical therapy game of the week Bentonville at Springdale Harbor Bentonville started the season last year 0 and 3 yeah well you know what they did in conference play they went 7 and 0 7 and yeah won the conference so again non conference who cares nobody yep. cares about yep. it it's all out the window so that's going to be our game of the week this week Rick Bentonville at Harbor Bentonville got a bye last week or open week or not yeah. a bye got an open week yeah. uh, coming off of a big win over in Tulsa against Booker T Washington played without several key players Yep. the game and still, still got the won. win. So you got them coming in. They should be rested, healed up. Uh, Preston Crawford, their good running back, did not play against Booker T. Trent Cole, their good receiver, did not play against Booker T. Missed a couple other guys. So they're coming in rested. Harbor, back-to-back -back shutouts going into this game. They're riding momentum of back-to-back -back shutouts. Rick, this should be a great game. What an opportunity. Bentonville has uh, dominated the, the conference last few years. Uh, but Harbor, you're at home. You're coming off two shutouts. They're not going to shut by Bentonville out, but what an opportunity for Springdale Harbor right off the bat said, you know what, everybody's chasing us. Everybody's chasing
chasing the cats. We're not chasing. So, uh, great opportunity for them. The, I mean, you know, this is the first game of conference play, but Rick, this game could, could uh, you know, be the conference championship game. It, it could be. Could based be. on the way they could played be. in non, you know, yep. non-conference, again, we're throwing that out, yep. but based on the way that they played non-conference, the winner of this game, in my opinion, has the inside track to the conference championship. Absolutely. You, won't, you don't want to start up. Whether it's on the road or at home, you don't want to start off conference play um, uh, losing your first conference game. So, yeah. We'll see how it works out, but Rick Harvard and I, got a chance. Now, Rick and I will be at Wildcat Stadium Friday at 5.30 for our Prep Rally live show before that game, and we'll have predictions of games going on that night because there's more games than just that going on. Absolutely. We've got Fayetteville and Bentonville West. That's going to yeah. be a big game, too, and that's going to have huge you know, implications in the 7A yeah. West as well, so we've got that one going on. But conference play all across the state begins on Friday. Rick and I will be over at Springdale Harbor for that conference opener, Prep Rally live at 5.30. 30 join us for that we'd love to have you come and uh, you know especially you harbor student section kids or whatever hey bentonville you got a great student section are you bringing it come to the game over. come join us maybe we get you two guys going uh, get them going early get them fired up rick how about that but we're going to separate them no we'll, physicals right no physical no, no okay no, we'll yeah, we can't have that all yeah. right so 5 30 rick and i'll be there so don't forget to join us for that and of course we'll have full coverage of that game plus all the other games going on throughout the region that we cover uh in the nwa democrat Gazette, as well as online at nwaonline.com. Great photos. Rick will have his predictions in Friday's paper, so you'll want to get a copy of that. And we'll have previews and things, so don't miss that. So, Rick, that takes care of it for us this week. Thanks for joining us on Prep Rally. Come join us Friday, 5.30, Springdale Harbor, Bentonville coming in, game of the week. Do not miss it. Oh yeah, we check this out. Andrew Brees. <laughs> 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 <laughs>